Robin, it's worse than we feared. It's the Vidar A that we were all worried was going to come after us. Batman, the Vidar A? Holy alphabet, Batman! What are we ever going to do? That's right, it is patch 51, and that Vidar A is coming. It has arrived, just like we've been talking about for like, I don't know, six plus months? Anyway, uh, check us out on the stream. Come, let's let's dig it in the patch notes and talk about it. Vidar A, with a new name, uh, is still the same. Unless you're Canadian, then it's Vidar A. Uh, shout out to my Canadian listeners. Anyway, check us out on Twitch and all that stuff. Remember to like and subscribe. Let's get into the patch notes for 51. A few bugs. I know iOS couldn't load the game for a while, but, uh, you know, not the worst start, to tell you the truth. So let's see what we've got going on here. Um... We've got Star Trek bringing us the Vidar Talios. It's a Vidar A, um, just no scrapping. So they're always throwing us a little bit of a curveball. And that, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of uh, undecided. Is that a good or a bad thing? You let me know down below in the comments whether you think it's better or not to have the scrapping. We've got the expansion cube. More diplomacy markers. Yes, they did add those in. Shout out to Rev who was making us more aware of that. And that's good. And the hailing frequencies. Emotes in space. Space, space. That's what I'm calling that. That's right. Thumbs up in, in space. What we all needed. Um, anyway, uh, some new officers, some new missions. Officers are interesting. And let's look at that. Um, and much, much more, as they say. So let's look in. Uh, the Vidar, new ship, the Vidar Talios. Looks like a uh, spiky burr or thorn of a Vidar, but in, certainly to be better and a free to pay, free to pay. Here you go. I'm speaking scopely, uh, free to play unlock path right there. Um, ready for us to make that upgrade. We know we've been sitting there going, we got to have more than 33 level Borgs to do. And we've been debating the age old question of what are the, what's the best Borg hunting Borg probe hunting uh, crew. And none of us can still agree on that one. So we need to mix it up by throwing in a new ship to hunt bigger, badder, and better probes. So it is the Talios. I don't know. It looks spiky and cool. I kind of thought we'd get like the, what, the Narada? That kind of thing. But, you know, no. Anyway, something there. One uh, big things to know. All for players level 35 plus. Uh, for shout out, if you're checking this like two months down the road, got to be level 35. Bond level ops level 35. And having a tier 9 Vidar, uh, you can then unlock the mission in order to work on this. Now, Important, the Tier 9 Vidar. We've just learned through some of the things from Eco and State of the Game stuff that uh, apparently only 6% uh, have a maxed out Tier 9 Vidar. So uh, you need to hurry up and be part of that 7% and get in there so you can work on this Talios thing. I'm excited about it. We'll be checking some of that out on the videos uh, in the future and uh, on the streams, of course. Uh, but I don't have it yet. So let me know uh, your thoughts if you're already experiencing that. All right, so the Talios, what's it going to give us? Greatly increased rewards from the Borg Refinery versus the Vidar. Okay, that's good. Borg Refinery was already pretty good, but of course we've noted with the new um, Borg loot grind, it was a big problem. They said it was going to get better. I and others probably said, hey, they're going to give us a Vidar A to make us better. And everybody said, no, of course not. So it, here it is. Um, anyway, access to new Borg systems, with higher level Borg probes, uh, level, beginning at level 36. I went in those. Those are tough with a Vidar. I'll tell you that. Um, anyway, increased in, uh, inner nan nanoprobes from these newer Borg, Borg probes, which reduces daily hostiles kills required for the Borg refinery. Okay, so get this ship, reduce the grind, makes it easier, because it ain't going to be easier when you're doing it with a Vidar, I will tell you that. Tier 9, whatever. Um, the ability to take on new group armada targets. Expansion cube, so a new... A new so, well, a new group armada fed by solo Borg armadas that requires the new ship, just like you need the Defiant to really effectively grind those Jem'Hadar solo armadas. So they're matching things up, I guess. When they left out the Defiant, they were saying, hey, we got, we got something else to add there. Anyway, loot bonuses for the cubes, the Vinculum Scrapper. I keep thinking it's Vinicula, but I won't go there. Anyway, robust warp drive with a warp range can be enhanced with ship research, so you can actually get into deep space. Reworked impulse drives that give it faster impulse speed versus the Vidar, so it looks like they are trying to make several changes that the Vidar has been very great, great for PvE, 
EVP, rating, all around ship. Only specialty ship that has so much versatility. Looks like they're trying to make the Talios better so that we'll have some fun with it. That means it may be fun to mix it up in PVP events, in territory capture, in rating ISO like we all do. Things like that. So uh, let's, I'm, I'm eager to, to check it out, honestly. I was a little bummed when I thought we might not get the Vidar A, so I was happy. That's Batman. All right, there's going to be some research. Uh, Reclamator, which increases the Borg's solo armada credits, dropped from the solo armadas when using the Talios. Warp range is going to increase with that uh, warp range thing. That way we can reach deeper systems. Um, prime inert nanoprobes increases the inert nanoprobes dropped by the Borg probes while using the Vidar Talios. Um, so if you get the prime, that'll make it even better. I'm hearing that other primes that affect only the Vidar, not going to affect this one, but there'll be new primes. The Vinculum Scrapper, increased fragments dropped from the expansion cubes using the Vidar by 5,000%. Yeah. Players who complete the Vidar Talios mission, part two, two parts to the mission, or purchase the Vidar Talios through the premium store, will get the prime particles to unlock this node immediately. Very nice. Okay. So we'll get that. And again, you can buy it or you can free to play grind it through the mission. All right, and they have an FAQ, so we can go to that page. Uh, it's it's pretty straightforward, um, but I'm excited about it. Let me know what you think down below. The expansion cube. There's the cube. You know, cube-like. Um, so, resistance is far from futile. All right, it's got uh, gravimetric torpedoes, which is their way of saying, unless you get the new ship, uh, you're going to have trouble beating this thing, and that is what they're saying. I don't know if you've tried one without it. Um, I'm maybe if you punch down enough. I don't know, but I'm not hearing that. Um, so tell me more and let me know what you think. So basically, you're going. What's going to happen in the grind is you're going to take your Talios. You're going to defeat a Borg Solo Armada. Although you can defeat it without the Talios. So I should say you'll defeat it with one of your ships. It can be one of any of your ships. That's covered in the FAQ. Um, and then your Talios will automatically get a one hour buff and you can use that to decrease um, to decrease the damage and impact of these expansion cubes. And they recommend that you have more than one Talios that is carrying that buff, which means you now have a greater reason to have uh, people with Talios, people running Borg solo armadas, doing them and coordinating them and then going after um, a group with the expansion cubes. So it suddenly makes it more needed if you want the stuff that's coming out there. So coordinate with your allies to get your combined buff Vidar Talios into a group armada. They did mention in the FAQ that if you run a, a solar armada, you get the buff on it. And again, you can get it without using that the Talios ship, but it'll apply to the Talios. If you do another Borg solar armada, like I know I like to run about three or four or something at one time usually, then it'll just keep resetting it. They're not going to stack, but you will reset, and so it'll give you that hour. We'll just buy back. So, you know, if you're having trouble coordinating, you could space them out that way. Um, and you get this foreknowledge debuff, which is going to help um, cumulatively against the, the expansion cube. The rewards on the cube are going to give us some Borg Queen shards. Yes, people are saying, hey, I want the Borg Queen. Huh? They were like, we're not going to get it. Well, we got her. She's coming late. Dizoc shards as well, charge nanoprobes, active nanoprobes, or uh, solar armada directives, and the Talios loot consumable, so it'll have its own loot consumable. Now let's move down to the new officers. There she is. Sexy board queen. Sexy. Scary. Sometimes that's the same, right? Um, all right, and, and what they're creating in here is the new assimilate state. So it's like morale like burning, like hull breach, we now have assimilate. We're being assimilated. All right, while a player's ship is affected by the assimilate state, officer abilities have their effectiveness reduced by 25%. That is definitely a big time PVP, um, PVP active uh, ability that's gonna work. And as we see, kind of interesting the way they're doing this through the below deck act, uh, ability, so you can merge it with um, other things like morale, burning, and hull breach, which is where the strike teams come in. So it'll be a lot more officers down below there. So we got the Epic Borg Queen here. Um, she's got an officer ability, Chaos Into Order. Increases your crit hit chance when you're hit by a Borg Solo Armada. So it might be, you know, cumulative. Maybe helpful for the Borg Solo. Below deck though, the one who is many. While fighting a player ship with Assimilate, Borg Queen increases the ship's armor piercing, shield piercing, and accuracy by X% cumulatively. So again, 
that's going to be good down below where she can contribute to stat stacking and be as part of the Wayun team or the Gold Ducat team or whatever. Um, I don't know. I'm the queen down below. Just doesn't seem that. But that's the way it's working. Now the rare Dazak here, he's he's important. Uh, officer ability choke point. While fighting against a Borg solo armada, increase all officer stats by X percent for the duration of combat. Okay, so again, Borg solo, but below deck, adapt and assimilate. At the start of each round, if the opponent's hull health is below 95%, Dazak has an X percent chance to apply assimilate to it for four rounds. He's your main one. It's not your it's not your epic, the queen. Thankfully, Dizak, who is going to be the important one to apply the assimilate condition or trait or ability in PvP. Um, so that'll be part of what he is useful for. You'll need him. You can supplement with her and him, but you're going to need him. Um, and then the rare Gasa, little Ferengi. I was wondering why that helmet was so big. Um, program to evolve the officer ability when fighting against the Borg Solo Armada. Start of each round, reduce the target's critical damage by X% percent for one round. Okay. Um, now, below deck ability is closer to perfection. While fighting a player ship with Assimilate, Gasa increases the ship's armor, shield deflection, and dodge by X% percent each round cumulative. So you can really see if you have all three of these down below and you put them on another, uh, pair them with a strike team and uh, with some good buffs, um, that could be very interesting. And that's going to give enough permutations between what you can have with your Assimilate down below and your strike team that uh, it may mix it up and uh, play around with the meta. We'll have to figure it out because we're not always going to be able to see what's below deck, you know, when you scan somebody. So who knows what surprise you ran for. See. Now they mentioned the diplomacy markers have been updated and this uh, they've given us several new diplomacy markers. That is good. I know people have had trouble when we uh, put the crosshairs on people to watch them and turns out somebody thought it was kill on sight and now you're trying to diplomatically get out of a war. Anyway, we've got more options. That's good. Take advantage of it. Let me know how you plan to use them because some of these I'm not really sure what to use them for, but a lot of these are self-defined. So put your comments down below. Fleet Commander Selectable Skills. This is another huge one. Shout out to Rev Deuce who mentioned this in a recent video. Along with Update 50 comes a new way to customize your Fleet Commanders with their selectable skills. See my previous Fleet Commanders video out in the last uh, week or so. Quantum Keys were removed as a cost to unlock these skills, meaning players can now unlock and upgrade each skill in a selectable group instead of being locked into one choice. Additionally, players can switch their selection between unlocked skills once every six hours per selectable group. Oh my goodness, that just changed everything. So the whole thing where we're talking about these groups of three, you got to make your choice once and forever, forget it, you know, um, and move forward, never to look back. Now you can look back every six hours and change it out, um, just like you have to wait six hours before you can change out the um, the fleet commanders themselves. So that's pretty cool. Honestly, I expected Scopely to sell us different fleet commanders that allowed us to get some of the same options but have to choose differently in order to trick that out. They just said, hey, we're not trying to monetize that part. And they're giving it to us. So that I think that's pretty good. Um, it says the fleet commander selectable skills were meant to be really situationally good, causing some strategic choices. And after internal play tests and community feedback was to make it easier for players to shift their strategies for various events and area of focus. I think that does make sense. All of the choices were always kind of good. And so you always regretted what you missed out. I mean, I thought that was the purpose, but um, now we'll be able to swap them out when we start using great effect. Let me know how that changes your use of the fleet commanders and your play styles down below. Bunch of new missions, including some level 34 plus the core missions, which we know we're getting there. The five Vidar Talios ones that start at 34, history class. The um, birds of carry on for 50 plus is something for the higher level folks to do. Um, uh, DJ has been uh, lamenting that lately. Uh, the side missions on Collective of One, level 25 plus, um, trying to go drop down a little bit, give a little bit of story for there. And the Vidar Talios missions, level 34 plus, again, 34 plus, and you need your Vidar to be tier 9 to kick these off and do They Have Adapted. You're going to be looking for They Have Adapted. Shout out again if you are watching this months down the road and wondering how to get that Talios. Get your Vidar to tier 9, get to Ops 34, find the They Have Adapted mission and follow the chain. All right. Then we're going to have some, oh, Anthology is being added to the holodeck. Anthology is one of those things I prefer to forget, but it is in my backlog of YouTube history. So check that out. Remember to like and subscribe while you're there. 
All right, some new refits. Uh, the Assimilated Amalgam refit. All right. Increase the Amalgam bonus loot ship ability by 30%. Okay, so it has some use, and uh, the Amalgam has proved to be more popular and useful. So let's see what you think about that. The Assimilated Stella refit um, increases the cost efficiency of Stella particles by 30%. So that'll make the Stella grind easier and better if you put the money into it. Um, the Cerritos Cloaking. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah. So a ship that doesn't engage in battle and is usually not targeted for being around there that you just used to buff, you can now pay to make it invisible. Prioritize your spending appropriately there. Anyway, um, new research. Prime, elite recruit prime. Greatly improves the officer yields in Federation, Romulan, and Klingon elite faction recruit refineries. I, uh, yeah, I apologize that I'm laughing. So um, these are the... Uh, um, elite faction recruits from the Federation Romulan and Klingon side. If you remember, we were talking about sourcing being bad for the officers. These came out and they are horrifically priced via faction credits. So horrifically, they're laughable and everybody skips them unless you just got a ton or so close that so you just need a little bit of a pull um, because they're ridiculously priced. So... Scopely's answer for the ridiculously priced bad officer sourcing mechanic is to sell you a prime that makes them better. Um, it, it, the phrase adding insult to injury does come to mind, um, and I think that applies here. You let me know down below what you're thinking. I'm not going to be buying this one. Maybe they'll let us uh, earn it later when they realize they shouldn't double insult us. I don't know. Some new frames and Avsars. What is this? A cyborg Borg heart? Looks cool. Valentine's Day is coming, so maybe we'll be able to get that. Of course, some avatars, some skins. This is, you know, um, Borg Queen stuff, but this looks like something from more recent David Tennant Doctor Who. I just want to, if you catch that reference, please uh, list, list it down below in the comments. All right, so we got that, and we got hailing frequencies. Emotes in space, space, space. There they are. Uh, apparently, you can get the um, Live Long and Prosper Spock and for free if you go to the web store. So it wasn't there when I looked this morning before work, but I'm going to go back and check it out. So see if you can get it, because I mean, who doesn't want that one? Uh, the middle finger remains elusive, like I predicted in the roadmap, and is probably TOS breaking, but the most desired one. So we'll see which one of these is going to become the equivalent of a middle finger in Star Trek Fleet Command emotes in space. You tell me down below. All right, apparently you can, whatever that middle finger equivalent is, can show up in the battle the battle log, so we'll see. Now we'll see a bunch of bug fixes here. Uh, just wanna scroll, look at that, that takes more than the page there to show you, and that's good. They've done a lot of bug fixing. They have a lot of bugs to fix. At least they are working on it. They did say the Orion Corvette research node is auto-completing. It does immediately take you to needing to build an Orion Corvette. So in a patch or two, maybe they'll put in a bug fix that says we've auto-completed that for you. I don't know. But we will slowly get through that uh, that field research. Um, anyway, lots of bug research and bug fixes, which are really needed. And um, and I support that because Ghibli's other games do not focus as much on bug fixing um, unless it prevents them uh, from getting people to pay money. So uh, this is a much better approach. So out to you, Scopely, on this part. And some improvements and stuff. That's great. Let's look at that. Um, and here we are. So that gets us into um, uh, patch 51, assimilate part two. Is it part two? Is it the end? We got a new Vidar A, and uh, I'm excited about checking it out. Um, so anyway, let me know your thoughts down below. Remember to like and subscribe. Come check us out on Twitch on our uh, multiple times a week streams on the weekends and Pacific after work times weeknights. Anyway, y'all take care. Cock-a-doodle-doo.